in class, we're going to go over one of the problems that gave a lot of people a bunch of trouble. It's all about these pendulums. How would you deal with something like this? It seems like the information isn't enough or the information just doesn't really give us a direction of solution. Well, let's take a look at it and see. What we see here is we have a pendulum. We know the pendulum's length and the angle that it makes to the vertical. So we want to know the speed of the pendulum, Bob, as it passes through the equilibrium position, uh, the equilibrium position being the very bottom. So then it tells us to determine the vertical uh, drop of the pendulum bob first as a hint. Well, how do we do that? Let's begin analyzing this by thinking about what sort of energy it has. When a pendulum comes all the way to the top, it swings up and then it takes a moment and it stops as it's about to turn around. So if we consider this, if it's stopped, that must mean there's absolutely zero kinetic energy, which means at this moment here, all of the energy is potential energy. But then it swings down and swings down to the bottom of the swing. So the bottom of the swing is where there's no height. And as we saw before, that there's no potential energy from gravitational situations when we consider that there's no height. So that means that all of that potential energy has now been converted into kinetic energy. It's all kinetic energy. So what I'm going to do is I want to redraw this situation to give myself a little bit more space to see things, but we're going to keep in mind that at the top of the swing, all that energy has become potential energy, and at the bottom of the swing, all of that energy has been converted into kinetic energy. And our law of conservation of energy says that we're losing none of that energy. So the quantities are going to be the same. All right, if I was considering my situation, my initial energy over here where I'm starting has some potential energy and some kinetic energy, but we already established that this is zero. So we'd be able to find our potential energy by taking the mass times the acceleration due to gravity times the initial height. And the initial height would be however high that is. Now we might not know any of these values, but that's okay. We're going to take a moment and we're going to analyze the other side of our situation when it's down here at the bottom. Here, the potential energy final we've already established was zero. And we know that there's some kinetic energy because it's moving. So it's one half times the mass times the final velocity squared. Now here, let's see, what things do we know? Do we know the mass? No. Do we know g? Yeah, that's acceleration due to gravity. That's 9.8. Do we know the height initial? We don't. On the other side, we don't know the mass. We don't know the final velocity, but the final velocity is the thing that we're looking for. But if you are keen of eye, you might notice, look, we have mass on either side of this situation. This means that we could actually divide both sides by mass, just like we would do with regular algebra, and that cancels it out. It seems that the mass of the pendulum bob has no impact on our situation at all. That's very convenient. So we have 9.8 times the initial height is equal to one half of the final velocity squared. Unfortunately, we still have two unknowns and I want to find the final velocity. I need some way to find the initial height. There's no physics that will find this initial height, but there is math. Looking at this situation, it may be hard to see, but you could actually make a little triangle starting from the height there. And now you might see, oh, I've made a right angle triangle right there. And with my right angle triangle, I actually have my angle, 
I have my hypotenuse and the adjacent side is a portion of that length of the pendulum. Well, if I was thinking of Soka Toa, using adjacent and hypotenuse means I should be thinking about my cosine. So cosine of my angle, 25 degrees, is equal to the adjacent side. I don't know what it is. I'll call it x. x divided by, by hypotenuse. My hypotenuse is the length or 1.20. So by rearranging or multiplying both sides by 1.2, I can actually determine what x is. It's 1.20 times cosine 25. So I'm going to use my calculator and I'm going to determine exactly how large that is. So I see that it becomes 1.09 meters. So that means this portion of x, this portion of x here is 1.09 meters. Well, this is actually very helpful because what's left over, what is this leftover section? Hopefully you can see, oh, this is my height initial. And if the total length is 1.20, then I can say that my total length, 1.20, is going to be the size of the x portion that we see here plus my height initial, plus my initial height, which is here. So this is what we have to do to determine the initial height, is a little bit of trigonometry and math. And we would be able to see here that the initial height is 11 centimeters. Well, now I can plug this into here, and we'd be able to solve for our velocity. We see that the velocity at the very bottom is 1.47 meters per second. So our key information, that potential energy stored in our initial situation turns into kinetic energy as it slings down. That's the way we begin to understand this problem. And then to get those last few pieces, we have to use a little bit of trigonometry and math to figure it out. So I hope that helped with the people that had challenged with this problem. Have yourself a good day, everybody.